Lifeway, good to see you today. I want to let you know what we're doing and where we're headed in this time. First and foremost, I just want to encourage your faith to lay a hold of God's Word and to stand strong in this moment. And I want to talk a little bit about that today on how we can do that. But before I do, I want to let you know where we're going as far as Lifeway Church is concerned. We've decided to postpone the Freedom Lesson 12, which is our last one. We're going to postpone that class this Wednesday and the conference all to a later date. And so we don't know when that date is exactly, but we'll definitely have you informed on when that's coming. And also, we are going to go primarily online Sunday mornings. Um, really just due to the authorities, we want to submit to that and be careful with the groups that we have. And so rather than you coming to us, we're going to come to you with Sunday morning services. And I want to encourage you to take them in because our heartbeat is to try to nourish you with as much word as we can in these times. And it's so important that you let the word get in you and that you hear the word of God. But on that line, I just want to say something. You can find awesome sermons all over the internet, which I think is super cool. That's awesome that we have that opportunity in this hour. But I want to encourage you not just to fill yourself up on sermons in this hour. I got an encouragement for you that I think is going to be very helpful for us because we're encouraged to be physically distanced, but I don't want to be socially distanced. I think it's important that we don't just take in sermons from all over the internet and just hear a bunch of word, but that we pick up the phone and call somebody, that we create some small groups and have some fellowship with one another. I encourage you to start a Bible study. Start a little moment of worship or maybe a, a, a time to get together and pray together. Create some opportunities to build relationships because that's what we need most in this time. And so don't isolate yourself. Call, the, call somebody. Pick up the phone and talk to somebody that you haven't in a while. Build relationships in this moment. And here's why. Because when you're isolated, the enemy can tell you anything he wants. And you might believe it. And so my encouragement to you is get around some people that you know are healthy and let them pour into you and you pour into them as well. That's what I want to see most out of us in this time is, yeah, we might need to distance physically, but let's stay connected socially because that's where we're going to find our power and the ability to overcome. I want to talk to you a little bit about how to live in the storm. I think preachers love times like this because we get to talk about all the storm scriptures and you know what they are. We're always going to them, but there is something serious about this moment in the storm that I want to talk to you about today. Matthew 14, 26 is when Jesus sends the disciples out in the boat and they go out and, and the Bible talks about them struggling with the oars because of the waves and the wind that's pushing against them. And Jesus just shows up on the water. <laughs> like, what, what are you doing? He just comes walking out on the water kind of like, What's up, guys? Uh, he was probably going to pass them by. He'd have just walked to the shore, but yeah, I'll stop at the boat and see what these guys are doing. And this is interesting because in verse 26, it says, when they saw him, saw him, they were terrified. Now, just think about this for a second. The Bible doesn't exaggerate. God's not one that exaggerates the truth. If they were terrified, they were terrified. Just think about that for a moment. You might be there today, terrified. The disciples were freaking out, terrified. And look at Jesus' response in verse 27. It says, at once, which means immediately, quickly, Jesus said this, don't be afraid, take courage. Which I've learned enough of the Bible and enough of God's character to know he doesn't want you afraid for one minute. Because listen, fear contaminates faith. Being terrified contaminates trust. We can't have that in us. We, we can't have both fresh water and salt water, so to say. We've got to be of one side. And so he didn't let them be afraid for a moment. He wanted to stop that as fast as he could. And he says, do not be afraid, but instead take courage. Or that word means confidence. Take on confidence. Take on courage in the midst of this moment. And I feel we're here. This is really cool. Jesus said, take courage because I'm here. Isn't that cool? I'm here. I'm right in the middle of the storm. I'm right in the middle of the fear. Take courage. And so that's my encouragement to us as well. Take courage in this moment. Don't let terror and don't let fear overcome you in the moment. Asks right away, Lord, is that you? And Jesus said, yeah, it's, it's me. And Peter says, then let me come. If that's you, then let me come out on the water. 
which I think is really interesting in the midst of this time because we have disciples that are honed in, scared on the boat, just kind of shaking in terror or kind of thinking of how scared they were. But then we have one that's like, I'm gonna take advantage of this storm. I wanna learn something in the midst of this. I wanna come out differently from this storm than I went into it. And that's my challenge to us. What would it look like for us to come out of the storm better than the way we went into it? To come out of this whole thing better than the way we were when it came, when it showed up. It all determines what you do in the middle of it. And, G- and Peter said, let me come. Let me come out on that water. And he decided, I want my faith to rise up and I wanna do something supernatural in this moment. I wanna go beyond my limits in this moment. That's drastic. That is some serious faith. And so he does. He steps out on the boat and we all know the story. He gets out on the water, he takes a few steps and what happens? He starts to see the wind and the waves. He starts to hear all the news reports. He starts to see all the chaos. He starts to see all the freaking out. And you know what's interesting? When fear shows up, you sink. When fear shows up, you sink. And he starts sinking, literally sinking because he started looking at the wind in the waves. My encouragement to you in this, and I know we've heard it a hundred times, is to keep your focus on Jesus in the midst of this. And I want to share this. I have eight things that talk about Peter stepping out of the boat. Number one is look for, G- look for Jesus. Look for him and keep looking at him no matter what. Although the storm surrounded him, he had to keep his focus on Jesus. Number two, when Jesus commands you to obey him, Obey him. When he gives you the command, go. And so my question is, what's he asking you to do? Listen to this. Even if it doesn't make sense, what Jesus told Peter to do really didn't make any sense. Yeah, come walk on water. (laughs) What? Even if what he's telling you to do doesn't make sense, life is found in obedience to what he's saying. Faith is simply the next step. Faith isn't always doing something drastic. It's just taking the next step. And so my question is, what's your next step right now in this moment? What's your next step? Because faith is just taking one more. I'm just gonna take one more step. And so what, what is yours in this time? Faith unleashes the supernatural, which is so cool. There was no power. There was nothing beyond human ability there until Peter stepped over the edge of that boat. Isn't that interesting? And then something showed up that was supernatural. The ability to do it showed up. And so you might be waiting for something to come, but it's not gonna come until you step, until you choose to stand up out of the fear, out of the chaos, out of the turmoil, and say, I'm gonna trust you. What's that step look like today? Number five, fear will sink you. Fear will sink you. Don't let fear take you, take you down. Uh, When when Peter had faith, he walked on water. But when he had fear, he started to sink in the water. Where are you at today? I want to see you built up in faith, church. I want to see you strong. I want to see you holding to the word of God and not being shaken. Because we're going to come out of this better than we came into it. A little faith is better than no faith. <laughs> if, if you could, I just feel like I can barely hang on. A little faith is better than none. Hang on to what you got because God will do something with it. And number eight, you can choose to worry or worship. What are you gonna choose? You can choose to worry or you can choose to worship. And my encouragement is to worship. Whether that's singing a song out of tune all by yourself, you and your dog in a truck, whatever it is, just worship. Lift him up. Listen, exalt him bigger than the storm. Exalt him bigger than the storm because when you do, you're gonna find out he's there and he is bigger than the storm. It's however you place him in your heart. So don't worship worry, worship him. And here's something I wanna talk about as well. We've gotta fight in the realm we don't see to see freedom in the realms that we see. Like there's gotta be a people who are gonna choose to to lock in and say, you know what? I know there's a lot going on on the outside, but I'm gonna hunker down and fight what I don't see. I'm gonna fight in that realm that we've been called to fight in. Now I know that sounds a little deep and spiritual, but it's true. That's where it's at. We've, who's gonna step up and fight in the realm that we don't see to bring some freedom in the realms that we can see? Because that's really where the war is at. 
And I just want to talk a little bit about that moving forward. Here's my encouragement to you. Live a life that you're going to be proud of when the storm goes away. Have some actions that you're going to be proud of when this is all done. That you can look back on and go, I'm glad I did that. I'm glad I said that. I'm glad I chose to do that. I'm glad I linked up with that person. I'm glad I read that. I'm glad I worshiped that. Have a lifestyle that you're proud of when this all calms down and goes away. You know, we have another storm in the scriptures that are just that exactly. When the waves are crashing over the boat and the disciples are freaking out and they're screaming this to Jesus, we're gonna die. Don't you care? And Jesus is like asleep on the pillow, just... And they're freaking out. And I just see them running all over the boat. Oh, this is horrible. This is horrible. This is the worst thing we've ever seen. And Jesus goes, shh, and the storm quits. Can you imagine your life in mid-rant, mid-worry, freaking out, and the storm just stops? You would feel so silly. I would feel so stupid. Right in the middle of your screaming, it's over. (laughs) I don't want anybody to be in that boat. Live a life that you're going to be proud of when the storm is over. And that's choosing to do stuff in the middle of the storm that doesn't feel real comfortable or might even make sense, but it's done by faith. You know, the scripture actually says this, anything done outside of faith is sin. Isn't that interesting? So whatever you're doing, do it by faith. Do it by faith. Have confidence in your heart that this is what God's told me to do and, and do it by faith. And here's another thing, which I've just been chewing on this lately. Live a life bigger than Facebook. Live a life bigger than Facebook because we're all closed in and we know that's the first thing we wanna go to is just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And in these times where you're isolated, live a life bigger than Facebook. Connect with some people. Get in his word. Worship him in his majesty. Lay a hold of God. Focus on your family. Focus on your marriage. Whatever you're at in life, go bigger than just Facebook. It's a great tool, but don't let it be your life. Go bigger than that. Lay a hold of somebody that you can invest into, that you can encourage, that you can impart faith into, because that's what God's called us to do in times like this. That's how you come out of the storm better than you went into it. I wanna give you a a super cool thing that I I think is gonna be very helpful. We're gonna open the church up Monday to Thursday from noon to three, and we're just gonna create an environment in the sanctuary of worship, of prayer. We'll have a playlist going, some scripture scrolling, and we just wanna open that up to you to come by here and just seek God for a little bit and just pray and press in and fight in the realm we don't see so that we can get freedom in the realms we see. Because there's people here who don't know how to pray. There's people in our city who don't know how to seek God. Let's do it for them. And so we're gonna open up the sanctuary and just encourage you, stop by, seek God, pray a little bit and fight that battle. And here's one more thing in the midst of fighting. When you think about spiritual warfare, the weapon that we've been given in warfare is a sword. It's a sword, which means you gotta get close to the storm to beat it. It's a sword, you gotta walk up, you gotta get right in the midst of it, close enough to hit it with a sword. And I think sometimes we wanna sit back with a gun or some other rocket launcher and think we can fight this spiritual thing from far, far away. Like, I'm just gonna stay way out here and fight it. And it's not how it works. You gotta get right up in the face of that thing. God's called his people to step right up in the face of it, to get right in the the midst of the storm and swing their sword. If you will, get right up in the enemy's face and say, I ain't running from you. I'm gonna get close enough to hit you with my sword. We've been given a sword, not a gun. So my challenge to you in the midst of this is to get right up in the face of it with confidence and boldness. Use what God's given you to use and hit it. Because if we fight, we'll win. So we're gonna continue to come to you online, Lifeway Church. We're gonna be bringing videos to you and encouragement to you. And so I just wanna challenge you, hear the word of God, get it in you, and don't just keep it in you. Give it away to somebody else. Make some phone calls, build some relationships. Try to get some people together and let love be poured out to one another because we're gonna come out of this 
way stronger than we came into it. We love you. We're proud of you. Our doors are open. Our telephone line's open. So if you have any need or hear of anything, let us know because we want to help people in this time, not just ourselves. Have an awesome day in Jesus' name. Find my